When Steve Jobs unveiled the world's first smartphone back in 2007, onlookers doubted whether such a bold new piece of technology would gain any traction. 16 years later, no doubts linger any longer. Smartphones are a cornerstone of modern life. They let us research, schedule meetings, and organize trips all on the go. Whoever controls the production of these devices controls the entire world. But Apple wasn't the only company pushing the world in new directions. An old rival, lurking in the shadows, identified the potential of the smartphone and began to make its move, sparking a heated rivalry that still rages on today. That company is Samsung, Korea's leading electronics powerhouse. This is the story of how one man turned a simple grocery shop into an international economic giant. This is how an electronics company became so powerful it managed to build its own city. This is Empire Visionaries. Chapter 1. A New Star is Born Samsung's origins can be traced all the way back to the late 1930s. The world at this time looked very different than it does today. Korea, once an independent kingdom, had been conquered by the Empire of Japan in 1910. As Japan was on the winning side during the First World War, it was allowed to keep its colony until its defeat in 1945. The occupation was brutal for the Korean population. Japanese authorities strictly forbade the teaching of the Korean language, burned over 200,000 historical texts, and made every effort to wipe out the cultural heritage of the country. Despite this oppression, the native population remained resilient and always kept hope that their plight would end. It was this world of conflict and cultural strife that Lee Byung-chul was born into, though he lived a greater life of privilege than most. After the Japanese annexed the kingdom, they used the traditional Korean noble families as an avenue to enforce rule across the country by proxy. Byung-chul's family was one of these families known as Yangban. Byung-chul lived a comfortable life. He attended the prestigious private Jungdong High School before setting off to study at Waseda University in Tokyo. He never finished his higher studies, however, choosing instead to return to Korea. Once he returned to Seoul, he started up a small-scale trading agency which focused on moving goods like dried fish and noodles across Korea and to other regions such as Beijing and Manchuria. Byung-chul named the fledgling company Samsung, meaning three stars. The young man had big dreams in his head, and his ambition shone through the name. The idea was that one day, the company would become as impressive and grandiose as the constellations themselves. Little did he know just how prophetic the name would prove to be. But at the time, Samsung was little more than a small grocery trader with around 40 employees. Byung-chul had started the whole project with the equivalent of only $27, hardly a mega corporation that could take the world by storm. In fact, the company hadn't even begun dabbling in the world of consumer electronics. In 1938, the time of Samsung's founding, electronic devices were a reality, but most Koreans still relied on manual labor and traditional tools for their daily lives. There wasn't much room for an electronic goods market to flourish. Still, Byung-chul led the company to great success. The corporate structure was very similar to Japanese companies at the time. Byung-chul established a Che Bol model where close family members controlled the company and subordinate executives followed directions without argument. As a result, Samsung grew and was able to expand into sugar refinement, textiles, and insurance. Even before it ventured into the lucrative world of consumer electronics, Samsung had become a household name all across Korea. It was in the 1960s when Samsung took the leap from a household name to an international powerhouse. By this time, the world had been swept up in a colossal wave of technological progress. At the start of the Second World War, flight and planes were still a relatively new and exciting prospect. Only 24 years later, Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. 
Massive technological progress was being made all across the world, and the invention of the black and white television threatened to shake the very foundations of Western society. Sensing a new era looming just over the horizon, Byung Chul made sure to capitalize on the moment and make Samsung a leader in electronic tech production. He established a number of departments dedicated to producing semiconductors, ovens, and other vital electronic devices. In 1970, Samsung unveiled its first black and white television. Korean citizens would finally be able to tune into the news and other programs. Though it had gained significant ground, Samsung didn't rest on its laurels. The company invested in shipbuilding, becoming one of the largest manufacturers in the entire world, and continued building more electronic devices such as refrigerators, calculators, and air conditioning units. It's important to note that at this time, Korea was split in two. North Korea had been absorbed into the communist sphere of influence controlled as a puppet state by the USSR, while the South had been transformed into a republic and allied itself with the Western powers. South Korea thus followed a capitalistic economic model and saw a period of rapid economic growth known as the Miracle on the Han River, where the country went from abject poverty to standing shoulder to shoulder with other economic powerhouses. Samsung would be one of the key companies that spearheaded this revitalization of the Korean nation. The 1980s saw the invention of the telephone, a piece of technology that would transform Samsung into the global giant that it is today. Little did Byung Chul know that by dropping out of university, he would launch a Korean company that would come to dominate the entire world. Chapter 2 Starstruck in 1983, a Silicon Valley star by the name of Steve Jobs paid Samsung headquarters a visit. The young entrepreneur was looking for a producer of memory chips and displays for his new Apple Mac computers. The partnership made perfect sense. Samsung had made a name for itself as a cheap producer of all kinds of electronic goods, and Apple was one of the core companies behind the personal computer revolution. Samsung began providing Apple with components that would later be used in nearly every product the new company produced, including the revolutionary iPhone. This partnership wouldn't do Samsung many favors in the long run, and would begin a fierce rivalry between the South Korean company and Apple that lasts until this very day. More on that later. In the 1980s, a new invention sent ripples throughout the newly globalized world. A hundred years prior, the fastest way of delivering a message was by handing it to a man on horseback. With the creation of the telephone, everything changed. Now you could call up a friend halfway across the planet in a matter of seconds. The only problem was that you had to be tied down in one spot in order to make the call. So a portable, compact mobile phone was invented. It was instantly adored by the fast-paced business world. After Motorola unveiled the Dynatac 8000X to the world, Samsung knew this piece of technology would be crucial to their continued success. The higher-ups invested heavily in research and development. Come 1988, the company was ready to show off its first mobile phone, the SH-100. It would take a while before mobile phones became affordable for the average consumer, so the SH-100 didn't exactly push Samsung to new heights. As time went on and parts became cheaper to produce, the costs went down, and the SH-770 model became a staple of Korean technological ingenuity. Samsung had once again proven itself to be a visionary. This capacity to innovate and predict trends has been one of Samsung's hallmark traits. It's a massive point of pride for the company. Samsung has always tried to identify successful trends to provide its customers with cutting-edge technology. In 2001, the company released the SPH i3000. The phone's design was eerily similar to the slab smartphones we use today, and it was one of the very first to incorporate touchscreen technology technology. In 2005, the world's first speech recognition phone, an early precursor to Google Assistant and Siri, hit the shelves. It doesn't stop there either. In 1999, Samsung also created the precursor of the smartwatches we know today. 
This new watch, the SPHWP10, allowed users to make phone calls from their wrists. It truly looked like something out of Star Trek. Unfortunately, customers weren't impressed. The watch phone flopped and the project was scrapped. Sometimes, adopting revolutionary new technology too early can play against you. The world simply wasn't ready for the innovation Samsung was bringing out, so their new phone products didn't see much success. In 2007, Steve Jobs introduced the world to the iPhone an invention which would remold the way we live our lives forever. Just as Samsung had predicted that the mobile phone would become a massive success, so too did they identify the potential of the smartphone. In 2008, Samsung created the Instinct, a direct competitor to the iPhone, which resembled the original in a number of crucial ways, but lacked Apple's quality assurance. It wasn't until 2011, with the release of the famous Samsung Galaxy S2, that the Korean company started seriously competing with Apple. Steve Jobs was furious. He argued that Samsung had stolen his idea and was using Apple patents to manufacture phones that mimicked the iPhone in nearly every way. Apple filed a complaint which would drag the two companies into a litigation battle that spanned seven years. In 2015, Samsung was ordered to pay their rivals a staggering $539 million. Not even a crippling lawsuit could stop Samsung's momentum. They stood at the very top of the electronics market and had no intention of giving up their spot. When they released the Galaxy S3 model, it was so popular that they ended up selling 500 models every minute. As the original price of the phone was set to $600, Samsung was making $720,000 in revenue every day from the model alone. On top of this, the Korean electronics company has always found ways to drive down the costs of production in order to maximize profit. For the S3 model, the costs associated with producing one model were only $213, meaning Samsung enjoyed a 61% profit margin. This business practice has remained in place to this very day. The new Galaxy Z Fold costs only $670, yet sells for a staggering $1,800. Overall, Samsung has capitalized on its advantages to crown itself the king of consumer electronics and smartphones in the 21st century. From humble beginnings, moving noodles and dried fish across the country, Byung-Chul's dream of creating a company as bright as the stars themselves has finally become a reality. There's so much more to Samsung than just its success. Not all of it is good either. Chapter 3 Shooting Star It might be hard to believe, but the same company that manufactures the world's smartphones also produces some of the planet's deadliest weapons. One of Samsung's departments, Tech Win, has been designing automated military weapons, tanks, and sentry guns for four decades. It's shocking to hear that a company that presents such a friendly face creates such destructive weapons and vehicles. South Korea is a country that has a vested interest in securing its defensive capabilities, however. With an antagonistic northern neighbor, which possesses weapons of mass destruction, it's hard to fault the population for worrying about their security. Military service is still mandatory in the Republic for a reason. Samsung's weapon designs are unlike anything else on the market, as they specialize in a particularly controversial area, pure automation. The sentry guns are able to detect human presence through infrared cameras and open fire should a credible threat be identified. The company's involvement in such technology has raised alarm bells. Should humanity deem automated weapons permissible, who knows how much damage the technology could do in the future? Beyond creating deadly military tech, Samsung has taken it a step further and is even providing its employees with their own village. Today, Samsung Digital City in Suwon has 135 buildings as part of its headquarters and can accommodate up to 35,000 employees, with a private helicopter ready to shuttle workers to and from locations. The city does more than just serve as a place of work. Teachers for employees' children and personal trainers also fill the halls, giving every family the opportunity to live a fully-fledged life within Samsung's walls. The city has 10 basketball courts, three football fields, and two baseball diamonds for its employees to enjoy. With that said, Samsung still operates as Che Bol, meaning Byung-Chul's founding family still controls the overall direction of the company. 
Today, the executive chairman is Lee Jae-yong, son of Lee Kun-hee, who himself was the son of the legendary Lee Byung-chul. The Lee family keeps a firm grip on the reins of the company and most likely won't loosen anytime soon. Though the Korean company clearly takes care of its employees, that doesn't mean Samsung doesn't have a ruthless side. Today, it holds a sizable chunk of the smartphone market share, profiting from an almost unstoppable monopoly. Together with its fiercest competitor, Apple, the two companies produce and sell over 40% of all smartphones sold worldwide. Regardless of what's to come, Samsung has proven itself a cunning, innovative, and adventurous company able to navigate through choppy waters and capitalize on its many advantages. While its friendly exterior hides a dark underbelly, there's no denying that Samsung spearheaded the movement that brought South Korea out of abject poverty and has made it a vital global electronics competitor. Only time will tell just how far Samsung will rise in its eternal pursuit of glory. What do you make of Samsung's history and practices? Do you think it could be run better? Should it do away with its controversial military department? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to Empire Visionaries for more content like this in the future. Until next time.